All right, buckle in, get ready, because we're talking about hormones and we're talking specifically about perimenopause. So let's dive in. Now, if you don't know, menopause itself is defined as having one whole year, so one calendar year without having had a period. But perimenopause, well, that's a little bit more vague. For many women, it can begin in your mid to late 30s and it can last for literally a decade or so. And the symptoms that you could have during that range of time are vast. So some common things that I often see are things like weight gain, especially around the middle. I often also see women's cholesterol and lipid panel skyrocket out of nowhere, and that's often due from that drop in estrogen. I see things like heart palpitations. Of course, you have your classic like night sweat and hot flashes, but uh, some women don't get that. I often will also see things like issues with bladder, so like needing to urinate more frequently or having the urge to urinate more frequently, vaginal dryness, difficulty with sex or pain with sex. I will often see insulin resistance or new onset pre-diabetes especially starts to creep in around this time of course you got the fatigue you got the brain fog the difficulty concentrating problems with sleep disturbed sleep is too hot or maybe it's you can't sleep throughout the night I see issues with mood we can get mood swings we can get depression we can get anger we can get rage all sorts of symptoms starts to creep up and I feel like we don't talk about it enough and it's due to our changing hormones so obviously we can't prevent menopause right it's a natural part of life as of now you know it's normal for us to go through those fluctuations in hormones but we don't have to suffer through it there are a vast variety of treatment options and I wanted to share with you some of my top tier things that I do and I'm working with my patients especially so number one is that I actually sit down and talk to my patients and clients and figure out what types of symptoms they are having because as I just mentioned there's a lot that can happen right And unfortunately, there really is no quote unquote test to say that you're in perimenopause. We often just use symptoms as a guideline. So yes, you could be having irregular cycles, but usually what I see first before that are some of these other things that I mentioned, you know, like the difficulty sleeping, the changes in the mood, maybe the night sweats, et cetera, et cetera. So getting a clear picture on the symptoms that you're having is a really good place to start. And so this would include maybe keeping a little diary of like your mood. Maybe you're keeping track of your weight. We could be looking at your labs, which I'm going to talk about in a sec in more detail. We could be looking at your sleep and, you know, how many hours you're getting, how rested you feel, how many times you're waking up throughout the night. All of these things are really important and it's important for you to know kind of where you are so that if you do initiate some sort of therapy, you'll know if it's actually working or not. So the next thing I like to do is look at labs. If you're new to this channel, you're going to learn real quick that I really love functional labs and taking a more in-depth look at labs. One of the things that I use most often is probably the Dutch Plus test. And this is a dried urine and saliva test that looks at different hormones. It looks at your cortisol, progesterone, testosterone, your estrogen, your estradiol, and it breaks down the different types of estrogen. And it looks at a few other things as well. I'll leave a link to a video where I've gone more in depth on this test. But this is a great one for me For one, to get a baseline of where you are. And then if we do implement anything like a HRT or MRT, this is a great way to track what the heck we're actually doing. And also another great way to see if treatment is actually working. On top of that, I also will do more in-depth testing as far as looking at your lipids and looking for insulin resistance, because this is often a sneaky thing that comes up. And we think it's due to that drop in estrogen is that cholesterol levels tend to rise. Your LDL may go up, your particle number may go up. Even though you haven't changed your diet, you could be eating and exercising the same way, but that change in your hormones does some sneaky little trick and it can really mess with your lipid levels as well as how your body responds to glucose. So we could also start to see some insulin resistance creep up. And this is usually the time that women also start to complain that they're noticing weight around the mixed section. And this is often that more dangerous visceral fat accumulation that's happening. Another important test, and I feel like this is often overlooked that I'll take a look at is looking at your gut health because there is a newly emerging field or newly emerging science 
science that lets us know that there is a relationship between the estrogen and our gut microbiome. I believe the word is estrobomalome. Don't quote me. I might not be saying that right. But your gut microbiome is hugely dependent on the hormone estrogen as well. And it can fluctuate with those changes in estrogen levels. So Sometimes we'll see a complete change in the gut microbiome of a woman who's going through perimenopause or even menopause because of that change in estrogen. And this can cause a lot of issues. So brain fog, fatigue, bloating, constipation, a lot of things can happen when the gut microbiome gets disturbed. On top of this, I also like to look at how well the liver is disposing of our estrogens. Even though estrogen may be decreasing, it is still possible in this phase to have what we call estrogen job dominance, where your estrogen levels, although declining, may still be way higher than your progesterone. And we want to make sure we're eliminating that excess estrogen in that way and disposing of it safely, that your body is getting rid of it and not converting it to a more dangerous type of estrogen that can lead to a higher risk of things like breast cancer. So taking a look at, again, something like a Dutch test to see how your body is actually metabolizing that estrogen and disposing of it is a great way. And then also making sure, looking at your gut health to make sure, you know, are, are you pooping it out properly? And is your gut health on point is hugely important. And this can make a huge difference in of itself, just kind of cleaning up the gut, working with your nutrition and looking at those results. This can make a huge difference even without adding any hormone therapy or any other herbs or supplements. This can make a huge difference to symptoms. Like I've seen this clinically over and over in my practice. So don't underestimate the power of having some labs. Yes, they can be a little bit spendy, but for me, they make a difference as to what I'm going to implement for treatment protocol. It's going to, you know, determine what herbs and supplements I may bring in or if we're going to jump to HRT or bring in progesterone or estrogen, which leads me to other treatment options. Of course, there are options such as bring in hormones, so exogenous hormones or hormone replacement therapy, HRT, or now I think we're also calling it MRT whatever. So I tend to use bioidentical hormones and I will use a variety of options from compounded creams or estrogen, progesterone, um, even testosterone, or I can also use, you know, pills and patches. And then of course, I also will use Chinese herbs, Western herbs as well. So for me as a naturopathic doctor, there is a variety of of what I tend to bring in. And it's for me, it's always about matching that treatment to the client because everybody has different goals. Some, some people don't want to take hormones. Totally fine. Or usually by the time people come to see me, they are over it. They want the hormones. And a huge part of that is also educating that we now know estrogen is protective in many ways, cardioprotective, neuroprotective, it's great for our bones, et cetera, et cetera. So don't be afraid to have that discussion. If you have questions about that, talk with your doctor and also educate yourself. I will leave a link down to two books that I really like, um, one called Estrogen Matters and the other one I think is called The New Menopause that are, and this that's fine for even if you're Think you might be in perimenopause. I think it's great to prepare yourself for changes and fluctuations that may occur and to prepare you to what to even ask your doctor because a lot of times you don't even know what to ask. And if you don't know, you don't know sometimes, especially if you have a traditional practitioner when you only get 10, 15 minutes, you might not know what to ask and it might not be given or offered. So educate yourselves. Now, when it comes to supplements, a huge range here and it's really going to depend on what symptoms you're treating. Again, I tend to use the approach that this, even though, yes, it's changing or fluctuation of hormones, not every treatment is going to be the same for everyone. That's just my approach. You can disagree if you want and go argue with your mama. I don't care. But for me, it's going to matter about matching your symptoms to one, your goals. Like if you don't want to use hormones, I'm not going to suggest you use hormones unless I feel strongly about it for some reason. But again, it's always up to you. But number two, it's like matching the severity or the type of intervention that you want or that you're comfortable with, with the risk profile and the what you're willing to deal with. That being said, it depends on not only what your goals are, but it depends on what area we're treating or what area we're, we're targeting. So if we're looking, say we do some testing and we're looking that you're not disposing of estrogen properly 
or you're pushing towards the more dangerous type of estrogen, maybe we'll use something like DIM that helps to eliminate that excess estrogen and helps to push you down the healthier pathway of estrogen metabolism. Or maybe we'll support the liver a little bit more with some liver supportive uh, supplements that help with phase one and phase two conjugation of the liver. Or maybe we'll bring in some Chinese herbs. Um, there's a number of formulas that either are help can help with sleep, that can help with mood and rage that sometimes comes along with that. But again, it always, always is going to depend on what aspect we're going after. Again, not a one size fits all. I know that's hard to hear sometimes because we just want answers, but that's actually just the truth. Other supplements I often consider are those that are going to help support the adrenal glands. So adaptogens that are going to help promote that healthy cortisol response and help to balance out the HPA axis, which can also have an effect on those hormones. I have an entire playlist all about different adaptogens, but for me, choosing the proper adaptogen would have to do with your picture and your symptoms as well as uh, your lab results as well. Another thing I often tend to add in around this time are antioxidants because when the hormones are fluctuating, you know, their body's often working overtime trying to keep up. And I do often see oxidative stress start to creep up. And so this can cause cellular damage and often just make you not feel so great can contribute contribute to those feelings of fatigue. So a lot of times adding in supplemental antioxidant support to support your mitochondrial health is part of the picture here when we're dealing with those fluctuating hormones. Of course, I'm always working with nutrition and working with exercise and especially strength training because we want to be promoting, you know, that lean muscle mass as we continue to have that change in our hormones. And we want to carry that lean muscle mass as we continue to age. So looking at all these different factors I think is the approach to take when trying to balance hormones if there is such a thing as balance but trying to bring those hormones to a level where you're not having tons of symptoms is kind of how I tend to think about it so using this whole body approach so looking at your gut health looking at your liver metabolism looking at the hormone levels looking at your stress profile because cortisol if We have chronic stress and there's lots of cortisol. That's going to interrupt our hormones even further. So making sure we have some mindset techniques. It can be cognitive behavioral therapy. It could be meditation. It could be journaling. It could be breath work. Whatever it is that's going to work for you and to really help you to produce less cortisol is going to be helpful. So what I really want to stress here, I know it's a lot of information, is that one, you don't have to wait until you're completely menopausal to get treatment. Um, you can, I have patients or clients who have started in their 30s with some of these recommendations. So it, it really depends on where you are in your journey, but I want to empower you and help educate you that you don't have to suffer in silence. But number two is to educate yourself because a lot of times this information isn't freely offered you know, in your primary care setting, one, they don't have time Two, they don't know any other options a lot of times about anything other than HRT. And still some docs are under the impression that it's dangerous or that it's bad to prescribe these things. And it depend it can be bad depending on a certain subset of people for sure. That's always going to be true. But we know that there's a lot of benefit and, you know, cardioprotective, et cetera, et cetera, um, for, hormone replacement therapy. So educating you and knowing, just knowing what's available can make a huge difference. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned something. If you'd like to learn more how to work with me, you can click on the link down in the description box. I have a couple options below. If you have any questions or want me to go into more detail in any of these aspects, just leave a comment down in the description box. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.